don't think we've told you guys yet, but... Yeah, should we tell them? We should. Which Has... one? You go. You go. <laughs> We're Brittany and Drew, house sitters, adventure lovers, and van lifers who have traveled to 24 different countries living in this, 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 and this. And welcome to our channel where we share what happens when you start to embrace the saying that the only constant in life is change. Now before we dive into today's big reveal, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. And now it's time to enjoy the show. Cloudy, a little bit chilly. Let's do it. Onwards and upwards. Running down the same road like so many times before. I never felt as lonely, but I'm trying not to show. Look at that, seven miles. What a solid run. Getting in some good stretches. Always. <sighs> you are so flexible. <laughs> it is a gift. Thanks, Mom. One of my favorite things about running now that we're like not always in a new location in our van, besides the fact like Van life is actually really great for runners because you're constantly motivated to go out and explore and kind of discover where you are, which is really motivating in its own way. But nowadays I'm really motivated by like the peace of mind that I find in running in a known environment. I find that so nice that we don't have to look at our GPS and try to figure out where we are. I know you've started to make new patterns to the neighborhood, so. Mm -hmm. Today we did the figure eight. <laughs> That was a solid seven miles. It Good was. Job. Also, crazy exciting news. You guys have to stick around till the end of this video because we'll be sharing with you probably the most exciting news of our adventuring careers. I can't wait for that and the shower. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to get my hands on the sponsor of today's video, who not only helps keep our channel running, but helps keep our bodies and minds running strong too. Mm. Now it's finally my time for AG. More than anything for us, it's nutritional insurance to make sure that we're getting the vitamins and nutrients that we need no matter how active we've been during the day. And in situations where it's hard to have a salad handy, it's the easiest and most convenient way to eat your veggies. Also in my podcast today, they were talking all about how vitamin D is basically the best way to protect ourselves from diseases. I mean, if I were president, I would literally give free dose of vitamin D to every man, woman, child in America. Just boom. 
If you use our link below, you will get a free year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 along with five bonus travel packs of the good stuff that helps support you in becoming the best version of yourself. Go, 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 go. <sighs> do you have a green mustache? I do. <laughs> Perfect. I find myself still hand washing dishes even though we have a dishwasher just because I like it. It's meditational. I don't know. Do you guys do that too? It's true. I think I've only seen you use this like twice. Breakfast of champions. Mm. Thank you, babes. You're welcome. This looks really good. Like your shirt, designed by I yours know. truly. <laughs> Theme of the day. Something important that we wanted to discuss with you guys was about how we are making some moves and decisions about the next step of our lives. Because after living on the road for the past seven years, immersed in the unknown, it has allowed us to kind of choose what our future is gonna be, rather than being in a career or some sort of a situation where we just don't have a choice and we just have to keep grinding away. It has been a beautiful thing what van life has given to us, but it has also been a very confusing, extremely confusing thing. Not everybody gets this privilege to be able to choose where they want to live or where they want to create their lives, but we do have this privilege. And so we're trying to be grateful for it and not feel lost and burdened and overwhelmed by maybe just not knowing quite yet. And going off of what Brittany said, there's only a couple times in life that most people get the opportunity to move somewhere else or make a drastic change, move to another country or out of state, out of their hometown. And that's after high school, before they're going to college or after university slash college, when they're drawn to a job in a certain city or just get that opportunity to move in general to follow that career path. Another time that people get the opportunity to move is when they go to retire and their kids have flew the coop. We're seeing that a lot in van life where people have worked for 20, 30 years, their kids are out of the house and they wanna go travel for the first time. And we think that's such a beautiful thing. And that gives them the opportunity to really think and connect about where they might wanna live or what lifestyle they have the opportunity for, depending on funds and how they wanna live their retirement. So that leaves Brittany and I early in our lives, in our early 30s saying, well, where do we wanna live? So being that Drew and I are not retired, the choice that we make about where we live not only is going to affect the family that we raise, the career path that we choose, and basically- What's a career? <laughs> I feel retired. I think we're unemployable at this point by choice, but the career that we want to choose will be completely affected by where we choose to live. And there are things that we've realized since living in this house that would be really nice to have as part of that place. Whether it's, you know, a farmer's market where you can get fresh fruits and vegetables from, or the ability to build a tiny house or an auxiliary dwelling unit in conjunction with your home, or maybe we just want to be able to build on raw land but there's different regulations and rules depending on what county we want to live in and so now that not only have we seen beautiful places in america traveling in our van but also in europe and africa traveling in our van and we've been able to explore south america as well central america and central america drew and i feel a little bit like okay we know what we want for the most part. We know where-ish. We know like uh, we know the We know the climates we like. Yeah, we know the climates and the activities. And but also the overall sense of innovation and happenings that yes. exist in certain parts of the country or in tech hubs, things exactly. like that. Exactly. Yes, things that inspire us and and continue to teach us ways that we can contribute and create things in our world that make it a better place, not only for us and for you, but for everyone and for generations to come. And so honestly, this choice about where we choose to be next, it feels like we're gonna make some big moves in our lives there and so we want to choose carefully we want to be there for a little while wherever it is that we choose to be 
I think going on that as well and something that we're really trying to look hard into, many of you also in the comments have mentioned about regulation, politics, taxes. California is brutal in some of those areas. And so we love the landscapes, yeah. the climate, the uh, just people. overall innovation and uh, mindset of the people who live here. Yeah, doors There are some downsides and we take that in consideration as well as some of the other states we've looked at in this kind of whole search process that we're going through. Holy crap, I'm kind of freaking out right now, guys. Bitcoin just hit 61,000. I've been following it for about three months now, since the beginning of the year, right when January 1st came around, and it has been a crazy train ride. We got a little bit of investment in it, not too much, being very careful and conservative with it overall, but this is really exciting, totally historic. I can remember following Bitcoin back in 2012 when I was selling used watches in Los Angeles as part of a company and we were looking at taking payment and accepting cryptocurrency back then. So it's been on my radar for a decade now. Man, I wish I had stored some of those coins from back then. I don't know too much about Bitcoin except for the fact that Drew spends way more time on his phone than ever before. Very exciting. Isn't that fun? You guys can look at some candlesticks with me. <sighs> right there it is. All time high. 61,300. That's crazy. <sighs> cray cray. All right, let's balance that screen time with some time outside. Yeah? Let's do it. You get a nice yard to go enjoy. Can I bring my phone and iPad? No. <laughs> uh, fair Remember that table that we teaked? Whoa. Look at that. That's our nicely teaked table. It is. It's really nice. Even got all the chairs. This backyard is so pretty. It's like having your very own park. That's not all the birds. Yeah, you're right. Aw, oh. look, this is what we get to look at. We've been noticing all the flower blooms and everything growing right now. For a lot of you who didn't know, this used to be a really prime agriculture valley, this part of the Bay Area. So it's pretty great to see all the flowers blooming, spring coming to life, and the animals loving it too. And I don't think we've told you guys yet, but- Yeah, should we tell them? We should. This isn't We're, the big announcement, no, <laughs> so don't but get too excited. Just something yet, else but, exciting. Yeah. We are going to be house sitting for several more weeks here. We are. We will still be returning back to the van yeah. afterwards, but when they offered us a few more weeks, we were like, you know what? This has been pretty amazing for us. Yeah. It has been very settling. We've been able to kind of work on some things that we wouldn't otherwise have been able to work on, which mm -hmm. is what we'll share with you at the end of this episode. But yeah, we're very excited to be here for a little bit longer. And honestly, the experience of house sitting has us wondering if we would be interested in house sitting like all around the world as we try to figure out where and in what sort of a situation we want to yeah. land in. When we talk about our future, we talk about like the situation that we'll be raising kids in and mm -hmm. hopefully having some pets. The next chapter yeah. of life. Yeah, I think not being able to have a pet has been the hardest thing for me with van life. I would love to have a cat and I think that it would have worked wonders for my mental health throughout 2020 to have had a cat in our van. <laughs> That's certainly one of the benefits of van life in foreign third world countries. There's a lot more strays around. There's animals yeah, that want to be cared for because they've been neglected. And I know. we had a lot of furry friends come visit us. Brittany wanted to keep a couple and I just said, oh, babe, gosh. we take too many flights at this stage in our life. We can't keep one, so. but. Okay, where were we? We were talking about Bitcoin and that brings us to the topic of finances. When you're planning a trip, you look at the cost of that country you're going to. So for like Italy or Greece cost way more than Southeast Asia or Central America yeah. or South America for that matter. Even you learn states. Yeah, you, know? you learn what places and how long you can go for and set your budget for accommodations, transportation, food. And so van life taught us that 
basically where we are is going to dictate what kind of a quality of life we can afford. And so that is a huge thing that now comes into consideration when we're trying to figure out where we wanna go. And whether we were living in a van or not, Drew and I have always chosen to live debt free. Because at the end of the day, who wants to pay money for borrowed money that you don't actually have, then have to pay it back? So really you're just spending more in general. Yeah, and so the fact that van life made us more conscious of our spending also allowed us to save money more yeah. easily. And the main reason that we chose to do van life internationally, especially for our honeymoon, was that it was the most affordable way to travel. You didn't have to put out money for accommodation. We got to cook all of our own meals in the van, go shopping like the locals. Especially being that it was in Europe. Yeah. Like Norway is probably one of the most expensive countries. So expensive. Yeah, but because we got to live in our camper and cook yeah. our own food, we were able to enjoy yeah. the immense beauty that that country has to offer yeah. without going into debt. Which leads into Brittany and I throughout the last seven years have kind of lived just a notch above college kids. We've hacked credit card points all the way so that, Free we, flights. So that way they pay for accommodation <laughs> if we needed them while waiting a night for catching a flight. Tell them what our, about our monthly expenses are. Yeah, throughout even Norway, back here in the States since we've been living, we spend about two to three thousand dollars per month and that's total, total for each of us, so $1,500 per person roughly. That includes health insurance, van insurance, food, all the different things we need. So Van Life has made us very conscious of our spending even mm -hmm. more so than we were before. Yeah. And on top of that, it has made us very conscious of how much waste we're creating mm -hmm. because we can see how quickly our little garbage bin gets filled up yeah. or how much plastic wrapping is, you know, comes with the food that we buy and how we can either make those items so we don't have to contribute to, you know, the immense plastic waste that our poor world yeah. is just getting inundated with right now, especially with all the PPP flying around. And yeah, with COVID and the yeah. single use plastics now that everyone has to use, but you can't even take your own grocery bags to the store and re recycle, reuse. Yeah. And so when it comes to our future and what we want to create, we want to be able to have solar hopefully being able to do mm -hmm. compost and have a little garden and be somewhere where that is valued in the community yeah. one thing that does drive me nuts and i think this is still the case but places like florida you're not allowed to have solar yeah it's wild i, d I don't understand yeah that's an unfortunate part about the politics and government in florida is that they don't subsidize or want to push some of the natural renewable energy sources. And so we want to be somewhere where we can really dig our hands in and be a part of, you know, this greener, brighter future for us all. Which Has, one? You go. You go. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I go. <laughs> I was going to finish more on the last topic, but you one can more go. Thing, one more thing. Basically, we want to work with our planet and not against it. And I think maybe living off the grid or in like a hybrid situation could really be the solution for us. Like a yurt? Or a treehouse? Or a or boat? Or a container? <laughs> the other thing that's really making us consider where we wind up is a sense of community. We see here how beautiful it is to have a farmer's market where you can see familiar faces mm -hmm. each week or being able to, you know. Participate in group sports. And, yeah, yeah, invite friends community over. Center. Yeah, so community is something that in van life it does exist, although it tends to be virtual yeah. and short-lived and if you do get to cross paths or meet up it usually it's just for such a short duration yeah and you're usually on your own journey or path or you need a day to decompress and that happens to be the day that you see that person and you're just like not in the mood or something but when you're living in a place and you have a community you can more so you know plan around seeing people that you love and that fill you up so for Drew and I, we were very much alone, especially during 2020 living in the van. And it yeah. made us very aware of how much being able to have our own friends mm -hmm. and our own activities and a safe place where like, I can go run on my own if I'd like. So all of this, yeah, comes into play. 
And to add to that, I also think that we were quite resilient and we were built for 2020 because <laughs> so although yes. traveling as a couple all in different languages and trying to problem solve and not getting to see familiar faces, we just knew how to handle 2020. And as remote workers, as I mentioned before, we, we pretty much, I think, uh, did the best we could. Yeah, we were very blessed. Van yeah. life in 2020. I was yeah. all right with that. It was you know? all right. And now knowing that on the other side of all of that was house sitting, yeah. it's just like the perfect balance for us. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure we'll be itching to get back to our van once we're done here in a few more weeks. Yeah, I do miss spirit. <laughs> yeah, I miss spirit too. You got spirit? I got spirit. How about you? <laughs> we're going back to spirit soon enough, guys. <laughs> soon enough. Don't worry. So in conclusion, choosing to go down a path full of unknowns is what has allowed us to make a conscious choice about our future. Yeah, and as the founder of Jansport taught us, Skip Yowl, life is an adventure and the path is unknown. And if you didn't know, Skip Yowl is the entire reason why Drew and I met. And what's even weirder about this house sitting situation is that when Drew and I were flown out to San Francisco where we first met for four days of training to be marketing interns together, which we should make an entire video about how we met. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, but we had dinner at the founder of Jansport's house, which is Skip Yowl, and that house, we had no idea. No idea. Until like last week when we saw someone who told us this and they were like, how did you end up where you are? The person who actually hired us for that gig. Yeah, the one who interviewed us out of yeah. all the students all on campus. All 400 students. But Skip's house was six minutes from this house by bike. By bike. We rode to it the other day. That was a surreal moment. Just a real sign that we are exactly where we're meant to be right now. Yeah. And even though we feel like we should know more about our future, it's just a lesson in you know, it's not in our timing, it's yeah. in divine timing, and yeah. we just sometimes need to be the most present we can be. And trust. Yeah, we connect with each other and just... Remember to pray about any of our fears or concerns or anxieties and just yeah. trust. And take a deep breath. <sighs> You're so good at that. Hmm. You're good at it too. <laughs> We're all good at breathing. <laughs> well, should we tell them about that big announcement they've been waiting for? Gonna do it right here? Right now. Right now. Yeah. We're not going inside. Nah. We're doing it right now. Doing it right now, right here. Oh man. Oh man. All right guys, well. This is something we've wanted to do for many, many years. We've wanted to take a group of people. It could be you who's watching this right now. <laughs> a group of wonderful, amazing adventurers. Yeah, on an adventure with us. So we are officially announcing that we are going to be doing a trip to Bali, Bali. in May 2022. That's yes. crazy. So prayers going out there that this does happen. Yeah. It at least gives us something very very exciting to look forward to. Bali is somewhere that we've never been, although we may... We want to go for so long. We may go there prior to the trip yeah. and live there for a few months. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We, we know it's an affordable place, and that's why we think this is a really reasonably priced trip. Yep. It's going to be eight days, and we hope that each one of you consider signing up for it. In the notes below, we're going to put a link, and you can put your email on it to get notified when the trip is officially launched. We'll give you also the early bird discounts, which should be about $100. Yes. I think it's the first eight people to sign up for the trip will get mm -hmm. that early bird discount. Yeah. So if you guys are just ready to have something to look forward to yeah. and to be with fellow beautiful people, <laughs> then please consider joining us. It would be yeah. so much fun. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Sign up below. One more look at this beautiful backyard. You guys remember Brittany's book? We gotta go mail one of these puppies to one of you guys. Let's hop on those bikes. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just bringing the GoPro. That was really close. It was just over my head.
Be sure to subscribe and tune in for next week's episode where we continue our hunt for land. Or maybe we should say water? This one for sale? It is. Oh, and use our link below to try out Athletic Greens. We love this stuff.